So one of you guys in the comments section was wondering what I did from start to mostly finish with a model. And I realized that maybe some of you have never had been able to make a home wet palette or knew about the milky consistency of paint, paint application, etc. And the comments did reflect that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a short little video here on what I do to paint models. So when it comes to dynamic models, like say this um, Neckbeardia vampire model, right? It's very intricate and there are things all around that are going to need different consistencies, different flows. Um, there are pieces that are just inside or just outside of, of other, other shapes. And it requires, you know, a little more in-depth painting. It's also pretty good models. This is a quick show off of the vampire models from Neckbeardia. They are great. This is like a fantastic little female vampire model that I'm absolutely in love with because it's the right amount of combat and sexy. You know what I mean? But we're going to go from this to this. This is one of the demon models from the same supplier, Neckbeardia. So the first thing I do when I get ready to go painting is that I get my wet palette. Now my wet palette is not a professional wet palette. I'm not paying money for wax paper and, you know, <laughs> a container. This is simply a Tupperware container with a piece of paper towel on the bottom and then wax paper on top. And you add a bit of water in there, get it all wet and shimmy together, and you got a wet palette. It works just fine for that, keeps your paint from drying out. This is all you need. So don't stress out about, you know, buying a professional wet palette. All you need is this. This is all you need. You can have all the stuff at home and you're good to go. So don't waste money unless you really, really want a professional web palette. Just get one of these and try it out. Have my water cup. I always need a water cup. Now, if you're going to be doing both metallic and non-metallic paints, have two water cups. One for metallic paint and one for non-metallic paint. Because the metallic flex and that metallic paint will shine on your non-metallic. Because you can't get all the flex out. And if you're washing your brush off in that metallic tainted water... Your regular flat layer colors are going to be tainted with those metallic flecks and they'll shine and shimmer where you may not want them. Next thing I do is that I identify just what I'm working with here. This model is going to be very intricate, a little bit of flesh, a little bit of cloth, a little bit of metal, maybe some stone, some leather. Identify all the pieces that, you're going to need, that you know you're going to need to paint and paint accordingly. I always paint from the inside out as much as possible. You won't always be able to paint from the inside out. That won't always be um, an option for you. So what you do is you simply pick... Is my fan on? My fan's on. Ah. Also, <laughs> while you're painting, be sure to stop any real airflow in your room or your painting area or else you will have air flung across your brush and trying it out on your brush. It sounds weird, but it is true. It is a fact. So, I'm going to look around. I think I'm going to do I'm going to do her flesh first and we'll go from there. Yeah, do her flesh first. At the same time though, you see here her tail is on top of the cloak. And the cloak is underneath her flesh. See? That's why you got to plan this out. So, I'm actually going to do her cloak first and then move on from there. That sounds like a pretty good plan. So our cloak. Uh, I'm going to use a nice midnight purple. I like my purple colors. Um, I don't mind admitting that. This Hex Lichen. This uh, Hex Lichen is my favorite purple color. I think it does such a good job making this pigment. You give it a good shake. You want lots of flops. Lots of weird sounds. All kinds of fun stuff like that. And, you know, I like dropper bottles. When it comes to being a dropper bottle and a flip top, these things don't always seal correctly and will dry out. I only get these for the washes because they're a great wash. Citadel makes a great wash, and that's the only, only thing what I buy from them. For my layer paints, I always go with Game Color from Vallejo. So, next is going to be the, the weird one, the, the, the consistency. I put a few drops on my wet palette. Alright. And then I want a flow medium. You can use water or an actual flow medium. And I have, um, that's a glaze medium. Am I out of my flow medium? Uh, I fucking hope not. I mean, one angry bear if that's the case. And I think I am all out of flow medium. That is absolutely frustrating. So, 
to alleviate that then, I'm going to take, take one of my brushes. I use um, non-natural brushes because I am rough on my brushes. I'm not going to waste a brush, <laughs> you know. I'm going to get actually a pretty thick, wide brush. I like these for broad surfaces. They get a lot of, a lot of work done very quickly. Frustrating. So, we're going to use water then. So get a little bit of water on your brush. I'm just going to thin down that paint. Now, you're not going to thin it down too much. You just want it to be the consistency of milk, where it flows a little easier. It makes it a little bit thin. I want a little more paint than that. I'm going to use a, probably a lot of paint for the cloak. I'm going to get a few more drops of paint on there. Always mind your brush tip so you don't mark anything. A little harder for me because I got all this camera stuff in the way in my microphone, so it won't be nearly as easy. But I want, like, a little bit thin. If it's too thick, you can tell right here. So you want it to just flow nice and good, like that. Where it kind of pools up in the end there, like a milk wood. Once you have it how you want it, you go on here and you just start painting. You know, it's uh, it, sh it should go on relatively thin. If you have to do more than one coat, that's a good thing. More than one coat is much more even painting. Much more even painting is better looking paint. If you have um, a thick coat, it's going to wrinkle or it's going to look weird. And you don't want that. So a thinner paint is a better paint. Don't be afraid if you're going to go into one on one coat. More than one coat is the better way of doing it because it's safer. There's less room to ruin your model. You won't have pooling issues or thick issues. Like, y'all seen the horror pictures of, of too thick paint, I'm sure. Everyone has their fantastic memes. But you, if you want to avoid that, you have to thin your paint. Don't thin to like Spanish Golden Demon levels, but just thin enough where it flows on better to get a nice even coverage. And this flat brush, most folks use big um, or, or smaller pointed brushes. I like the thin flat brushes for doing cloaks. Because they just give the paint out much more evenly with a broad surface. They get a lot more work done without hurting the model. Do, 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 do. And just relax. No need to be under pressure while you're painting. Painting should not be a pressure or anxiety ridden activity. You should be enjoying yourself while you're painting. There's no need to be stressed out while you're having fun. That may sound pretty Bob Rossi, but so be it. So since I have all these places here, I'm gonna go back to from, from a flat brush to a thinner brush. That way I won't mar anything around um, cloak there, more than I already have. You'll always have overpainting. Don't get stressed out if you have a fleck here or a, or, or a brush mark there. That happens. All that stuff happens. You gotta get used to it, because even the pros will mess it up from time to time. Don't you worry. In the end, we're all human beings and everyone makes mistakes. So, while doing this, double check your paint consistency. I'm still doing good here. And I'm just gonna go back here. I'm gonna get in this little socket area here. This little pocket in there I want to get. So I'm just going to take my brush and point her in. Um, don't stab. You want to kind of like, um, kind of lay and kind of lay flat and then push. You can kind of push paint where you want to have it. There's no need to like go in there and stab and maybe get your paint where you don't want it or the bristles splay out. Don't need to do that. Just kind of put your brush here and just kind of push it in. Just push. There's no need to go in there like a sword so it's trying to stab paint around. The brush will conform to the edges of things around it and give it you know, a much, much more cleaner edge if you do that way. I like the old push method. It served me well over the years and it makes me feel happy because I get a nice clean edge on stuff and it makes me not stress out so much about keeping things super crisp because the brush does all the work for you. I do wish that uh, I get a better painting thing setting up because it is hard to paint around these cameras or this camera. Let me tell you, this big ass microphone's like in my ear. I'm trying to duck around and see what I'm doing. Definitely easier on paper, just like painting. But yeah, see how thin that is. I want you to see how thin this paint is when I brush on. It should just be just barely translucent, and you can go over there and kind of push it around. 
and paint and paint and paint and paint. You have to go for another dip for a nice thicker piece of paint that's not so watered down or go for a second pass. Don't feel afraid to do that. S layers are always better. Multiple layers are always better than one massive single layer. And it's so hard to talk and paint, my goodness. And not sound like I'm a rambling madman. Which is easy for me to do. But yeah, usually on almost everything I do, I'll do multiple coats just to keep things nice and smooth. That's my phone. That's not on vibrate while I'm painting. Ah, damn it. It's going to get awkward quick. Alright, so let's get in there. Do what you can. Okay, kind of grind that edge a bit with that brush. It's going to more like a click and drag, but more push and drag, click and drag, place and drag. That's the term you use for not mouses. <laughs> All right. So you see here, it's a, it's, there's different layers here because you see some are light and some are dark. It's all going to clear up, and the second layer goes on there. So that's just all part of the way things are done I'm gonna put my phone on vibrate so you guys don't get a bunch of weird alerts because I'm sure y'all know I'm a dirty fucking weeb and I like making people feel awkward when they hear my phone it brings me much joy to see them turn to awkward normies alright so this is you gotta t t like, I said, like I said before um, don't feel afraid to go in here and kinda turn things around you can't turn them upside down or flip them over, hold it a different way. Whatever you gotta do to get in there and make sure that paint gets where it needs to go. Don't be afraid to turn the canvas. I keep tapping that fucking recording. <laughs> I got no room to paint. I'm trying so hard so you all can see stuff. Usually I hold these things pretty close to my face so I can see things, but I can't do that right here. So I'm kind of painting with a handicap. All right, gonna let that dry. This is already dry here, so I'm gonna take a little dip here. Keep your brush moist because doing a little dip. It's always good to keep your to keep your, your brush tip moist, though you don't don't get dried paint clogging up in it. Now I'm gonna hold this brush sideways and just kind of drag it along. Drag it along, get that second layer going. That's a little thick. I take my brush, thin down the paint a little more. Try and there we go. So you can tell when it's thick because it's going to kind of build up with those ripples. You don't want ripples. You want a nice flowing layer. There we go. That's much better. And go back, get a little more paint that's thinned down, and apply it to the surface you wish to paint. You can see how that second layer is already covering up all those little weird spots we had. Going to add much more di much more dimensions to your painting as to your not your painting but your model your painting as well. There we go. See, everything's going just fine. You're all worried that you're gonna have these weird spots on your model, but see, no need to worry. Just keep on painting. Keep on painting. And I'll do this for the entire model. Even if you're just painting a tiny tyranid or. A Imperial Guardsman or a little bitty skeleton like I do. There's no rules saying you can't spend your time on them and make them look good. There's something to be prideful of when your lowest tier model looks better than the other guy's general. That's something you all should take pride in. And no matter how much he beats your ass for metagaming, at least your army looks better than his. It's the small victories you got to cling to. <laughs> Alright, so then. Then thin that paint down again, get my brush nice and wet, keep it nice and thin, go in and do this. Now you can see a lot of movement here on this. I see that's kind of splotchy. This next layer goes on, all that's just going to go away. You're going to ride the edges, keep it nice and crisp, or as much as you can, because things will not be perfect. This is that's perfect painting. Yeah, but you got to do your best. See how all those rough spots just kind of just go away and homogenize? It's really nice when that happens. It takes all the stress out of painting. It's always fun watching your model evolve as you paint it too. I gotta paint up some uh, Flectarn Stormtroopers. I'm really excited to try that out. 
because they start out really boring. You add more and more layers, more and more colors, and suddenly you got a fucking awesome looking stormtrooper staring at you in your hand. And you're like, hey, I did that. I, I painted that stormtrooper. It's always fun to me. I don't know. I think it's a it's the simple things I tend to take pleasure in nowadays. I don't know. I think the army broke me. <laughs> All you had was simple things to appreciate when you're in the army. Having hot food or cold water or a nice breeze. You learn to appreciate the small things when you're suffering, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I'm sure any veteran can tell you the same. Alright, so there we go. That nice and layered up now. And now it's kind of one on one. We got a few more spots here, but hey, another layer's no problem. Just get it nice and thin. And back in you go. Get that paint where it needs to be. Get that paint where it needs to be. Up here in that collar. Some some paint up in there too. I usually overrun on armor, because armor always gets painted last. It's usually with a dark metallic. Or a darker color, so I don't really sweat it by getting overrun on, on armor. Alright, there we go. Cloak's all done. And since uh, the cloak is on the, the very rear of it, there's less chance of us kind of overrunning on that cloak. I'm sure you're thinking, but Gar, what about that tail right on top of that cloak? Well, I'll show you how I do that. First, we're going to get our brush nice and clean. And I do not lick my brushes. I use my fingers. And what I do is you use a, a crease right here in your hand. What you do is you put it around that crease, grip, and the brush will follow that crease, come out tipped. That's how I do it. Plus, you can see if there's any metallic flex or paint flex in your hand because it'll drag out from underneath the brush. That's why I can tell if your brush is clean or not. If you see any paint on your little hand crease there, you can wash your brush again. But for flesh color, what do I do for a flesh? The big guy was blue. I might do her in a yellow, an orange, or red. Hmm. A fun color for an, uh, a demon. Fun color for a demon. Hmm. I don't want to do black. I don't want to do blue. The other guy's blue. I don't want to do green because green's just silly. He wants to see a green demon. Let's try a nice electric blue. This one right here. That should look nice, I think. I think. And then you can do her hair in a complementary color. Whether it's, uh, well, look on a color wheel, and you can probably see, you know, what colors will look good with her hair. Nothing wrong with looking at a color wheel to figure things out. Alright. Get the paint on here. There's not a lot of skin. I'm not going to use too much paint here. This paint is pretty thick, so I don't use it a lot. So. Take your brush, blip, blip, get that paint thinned out, and you'll see how this paint's going to thin out. See how thick that is right there? You get that water in there, it's going to thin out. It's going to drag out. Now that is almost a little too thick, but almost there. So get a little bit more water. I want it to just flow better. You can drag that thicker paint in to kind of even it out. But this is just what I want. Just, just thin enough where it's going to flow nice and good. Then we'll go on here, and it's important because of her face, because the face, you don't want to drown out the details, now do you? You don't want to have a horror story for work in progress on TV to laugh at, now do you? So the tail. You want to hold the model sideways and the paintbrush sideways. You don't want to go tip in. You want to go flat edge like this. You want to take as much time as you need. Just take that flat edge and drag it where it needs to go. So flat edge, flat to flat point pointing outwards and just drag just focus camera just drag that flat edge a little part but that's an easy clean easy cleanup and easy fix I'll show you how to do it a good thing that happened too I'll show you how to fix that but the more careful you are the less work there's gonna be it won't always be perfect but you can do your best to make it as clean as possible there we go so we got one little issue right there, and one little issue on top. For when that paint was just coming on there, and we'll take care of that, and when it's dry. But hey, you know, mistakes happen. You just gotta keep working through them. I think her thigh here is exposed. So I'm gonna paint her thigh real quick. A little bit of that paint. 
There we go. This camera is awful. Cannot wait till I become a big, famous YouTube persona. <laughs> I can afford all this fancy stuff that everyone else uses. Won't that be fun? <laughs> Let's be real here. I I know where I lay in the YouTube ecosystem. I ain't I ain't no fool. I know how it works. <laughs> All right, and there we go. Just try and take your time. You can't really do flat to flat here, so I usually mostly use the tip as kind of this poke and drag where I need to. Gonna take my brush to get a little dry now, so I'm gonna take that brush and get a nice new load of paint on it. I know Duncan says not too much paint, but I like to use the amount I like to use. Everyone's going to have an amount they like to have on their brush. That's just the nature of things. Find out which amount you like and try to stay consistent and know how to work it. Mr. Spot. Oh, no, that's her tail. Oh, it's a tail down here. That's why I didn't paint that. It's raised. Guess I'll do that real quick. I'm sorry you guys keep getting knocked out of frame, but I gotta see. Just keep painting. Do 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 talking to myself to a camera. <laughs> Alright, so we got both our thighs there. And since that's gonna dry really quick, we're gonna go in and get that second layer on real quick. Keep hitting that damn camera. Video's been going on for a while now, so I'll probably uh, finish up her little torso here and then show you guys how to clean up those mistakes. And then I'll end it. That should be enough for you guys to help you out and then probably ask me more questions I'll make more videos and the cycle will continue <laughs> if you do have questions just put them down below in the comments I'll answer them whenever I can and if they're really good and there's enough of you I'll make another video and explain it away okay so that's good enough for now so you got a few mistakes here now don't we and you gotta fix your mistakes. Can't leave them there. Our folks will notice now, won't they? So what you do is you take your brush, get nice and pointer, get your color that you just had, get nice and thin down. A little bit of water here. A little bit of water goes a long way. Roll that tip. All right, and we got a little bit, a little bit of underrun here. So we take that tip of that brush, you just follow the run, just follow the run. Get that blue out of there. And there you go. That little tip right here, you can see the little blue circle right here. Take that tip of that brush and just run it right along the edge. Make that blue go away. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. That's why you don't need to get stressed out when your paint will run. So that's why a lot of folks are afraid to thin down their paints. Like, what well, if it runs? It gets too thin. Well, you stop painting, let it dry, and you just fix it. No issues, no problems. No need to get sad or frustrated or angry. Just let it dry. Use that same paint to fix your issues. And it's a learning process. That's the, that's the one of the biggest truths there are. It's a learning process learning how thin or thick a paint should be. I've been painting for years, and you just saw me right here. I still get a little bit iffy sometimes. You can't be a correct 100% of the time. But when the mistakes happen, just get in there and clean it up. Just like that. And down here, got a big runoff right there. Had that paint a little too a little too thin down there. Got a little edge. Just going to take your brush. Clip a little purple spot right there ahead. Yeah, it's going to be difficult to get this on camera, but I'm going to go in here and not get caught in my damn recording cord. It's everywhere. No. It's fighting me. All right. Let's see here. Ooh, got to get in there and got the tip drag here. I don't want to tip drag, but I have to. And just get in there and just clean it up as smoothly as you can. There you go. All right. Get the blue paint I get in there, but I'm doing that off camera. It's hard to paint with this camera in front of my face. <laughs> I got a few spots here of purple I gotta fix up as well. Just get them while I can. And that looks good there on that hip. 
little more purple, blue, purple here. There we go. And yeah, I mean, that's how I do it. Just lots of layers. Take your time. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. So um, if you have any more questions or concerns or questions, just put them down below uh, in the comment section. I'll get to you with it. This is another one of the models I'm working on for the vampires. Big old baddie boy here. It's pretty fun painting this guy. This is all done with just layering. Layering and inks. So you get the layers going. You get your inks going. A little bit of highlights here and here. A little bit of dry brushing. And it all comes together. Don't worry about it. It all comes together. It all comes together. I always got to put... I, always gotta, I, I know I repeat things, but, you know... Folks just get so torn up about their painting that they have to get so stressed out. I don't want to see folks stressed out. They should be relaxed and enjoying the painting process. That's how you get things like this. You just got to relax and keep on painting. Just keep on painting. But this has been Guard Bro. And until I see you next time in the next video, review, model review, painting video, or the next Strand and Fantasy series, or the next Nick Beardia video, I'll see you all next time.